front end development right now is kind of boring. And I mean that in the best way. You see, when I say boring, I mean it in the sense that things are pretty stable right now in front end land. The big problems for making a front end application on the web uh, seems to have been solved, which wasn't really the case when I started in this industry in 2010. Solved in the sense that most of the hard problems have solutions today. Uh, the biggest hard problem being how do you update a web page efficiently and easily from the developer's point of view. And honestly, there's been a steady march of progress to getting to this solution. And I feel like we've had it for the past couple of years. I had somebody ask me recently, how do you stay up to date with all these front end technologies? And my answer to them was, I don't need to. Most of the changes nowadays and the new additions aren't radically different from what I already know, which means that it's not terribly difficult to stay up to date with what is going on. I am kind of an exception because I still do read a lot. I, I soak up what's going out in the industry. That's just who I am. But there really hasn't been a paradigm shift in the way that you write modern web applications today for the past, I wanna say, five, six years. Well, let me show you what I'm talking about. So let's take React as the first example because it is honestly the first library to really solve the problem of how to make modern web applications. Uh, its influence across the front end landscape has been so influential that there really hasn't been a huge revolution like React since it came out. React itself is very boring. And I mean that in the most complimentary ways in the sense that it's not radically changing anymore, which is awesome. Uh, React 17 came out this time last year. This is October, 2021. React 17 came out October of 2020, 2020. And the big new features in React 17 was no new features. So again, not much new things to learn there. And you can kind of scroll back with the React 16 lines. Uh, the one that was most exciting was the one with hooks, the one that actually gave hooks out, which was in February of 2019. So if I can do calendar math, which I'm actually horrible at, uh, that's two years plus six months that hooks has been in development at large. Hooks aren't new anymore. It doesn't mean that they exist in everyone's applications because people made applications before 2019, but in terms of new things to learn, things that you can get excited about, things you have to catch up on, you don't really have that. Uh, React is boring now. There's not that much new. Uh, React 18 will definitely make things exciting again for better or for worse. But what the React team is always great at is making these things optional to adopt as you can and need to, which is what Hooks did as well. Another example is Vue.js, another very, I don't think it's as boring as React. And again, when I say boring, I mean constantly changing, constantly churning, having to rethink how you make everything entirely. Vue.js is pretty stable and that's one of its main marquee features. But honestly, it changed the most recently when it released uh, view 3.0, where it literally rewrote the entire library itself and obtained parity with view two. Uh, the new features, aside from migrating, which is going to be a pain for view two users, the new features of view three to learn, to understand how they work, are features, honestly, largely that came from React. This from my point of view, you're welcome to disagree, but there are features that existed in the front end framework landscape that weren't foreign. They were familiar and now brought to Vue.js for your own viewing entertainment. Uh, you look at the Vue uh, repo for Vue 2.0 and the last release on there, which this doesn't mean really that much, but it's definitely Could you that? Could you try rude. Uh, I guess somebody likes things exciting, my watch. Uh, the most recent release on Vue 2 was June 7th, which shouldn't be a surprise because most attention now is on Vue 3.0. I love that it's Vue next. The latest release was 12 days ago. Uh, which, you know, things are moving along. But again, the delta of things you have to relearn, pretty small. Ember has historically always been boring. That is built into their ethos to be boring and stable and calm and easy to use. 
and they have not broken that promise ever. Same thing with Angular. I'm not allowed to say AngularJS anymore, which makes me upset. I actually have very fond memories of AngularJS, but never really used Angular, but uh, pretty boring too. Um, they actually are releasing, when I was doing research for this video, they're actually releasing new versions at a faster clip, uh, but I would argue that's more so for them trying to stabilize some core assumptions they made in their library more so than just getting new features out the door, because I don't think things are changing that much. Svelte is where things get the most exciting and the least boring currently. It, it's one of the newest ways of rethinking how to make an application, which is why I think many people are excited about it, because it's new and people like shiny new things. And it's not that boring, unfortunately, but also fortunately, where it kind of collapses the idea of a component into one single page file that has both the behavior, the HTML, and the styles all in one. And it uh, takes the approach of being compiler first. And that's actually a novel innovation with Svelte is that it is specifically geared to be used with the compiler in mind. All the other libraries that we saw before are done at runtime. Things happen. Uh, I think Vue.js does some transforms for its single page files as well. But by and large, there's, there's a runtime. When you load all that JS in the browser, there's the runtime for that framework that then handles updating the UI. Uh, this, there's a layer of abstraction. Uh, what you write here is not what's ran in the browser. Uh, a compiler comes in and goes <laughs> magic and a different piece of code runs on the page. So Svelte is by all means the most exciting of late, but in some ways also still boring. Uh, Svelte 3 is the latest version. Uh, of Svelte, and it was released in April of 2019, which again, if you remember, React Hooks came out in February of 2019, two and a half years old. Svelte 3 has been around for two and a half years. That's a long time. I mean, I remember when frameworks came out every other week, it seemed like, in around 2015, and it was honestly uh, exhausting, and JS fatigue was in vogue for good reason. And I have JS Boredom right now because I like shiny toys. Uh, the big thing with Svelte nowadays is looking into Svelte Kit, which is kind of their equivalent for Next.js. Uh, as Next.js is to React, Svelte Kit is to Svelte, a kind of framework for making Svelte applications. And that's, they're really focusing on going to 1.0 here, and that's the most exciting thing, and with good reason in the Svelte land. And then taking even one step further, is SolidJS. I have a video about SolidJS, about why uh, I don't think it's better than React, which was primarily, if you want to skip that 10 minute video, it's mostly that it's it's new and it might be hard to unseat React when it's so familiar. I did more reading about it afterwards and more conversations. And I think that I didn't really understand when I made that video before, which I now do, is that SolidJS is actually pretty innovative in what it's doing. Um, whereas these other libraries are more focused around the UI and having the data being you know, synchronized to the UI. SolidJS kind of takes a inverted approach from what I can understand where the data is the star of the show. And the way that it does UI is almost a side effect of the data. And the brief way that I mean that is that SolidJS, the easiest way to understand it is it's kind of like RxJS which is a reactive library that you can add listeners to. And what's interesting about SolidJS is that it has this reactive core that you kind of say what the UI should look like, but the reactive core is the core of the application. I'm not doing a good job of explaining it, which is sad because I had all this time to prepare this video, but uh, the easiest way to think about it is that with Solid, it's data first and components are almost a side effect. It's almost it's almost a acquisition of the author that to make a web application, you need to consider UI. I imagine uh, if the author didn't have to worry about UI, he'd be much happier and just live in his fun little data land. So yeah, front end development right now is boring in the best way possible. JS fatigue is dead from too little stimulation. It's nice that things have stabilized in the front end land. It was definitely due to happen, and I'm glad that it did because I felt the pain of hearing every joke about JS fatigue. It was true, I admit that, but not any longer. Uh, it's actually interesting how untrue it is right now that the current really exciting part of front end development is all these libraries turning towards non-JS languages to optimize their behavior. 
my previous video talked about this extensively about how Rust is in some ways killing JavaScript in the sense that some of the core logic and behavior of Next.js, for example, is being rewritten in Rust to get more performance out of it. If there was more big features to worry about, I doubt they make that a priority because it'd be easier to do it in JavaScript, but things have stabilized to such a degree that they can invest on these more complicated languages to get the value there, which is speed. Speed. So yeah, it's kind of weird to be in this state where things are slower. Doesn't mean there's not still challenges to tackle and things to do, but the core of front-end development is one that you can kind of rest easy once you master. And that's a journey that you'll take anywhere you go. That is this week's video. I'm curious if you agree or disagree, and I would love to hear it in the comments. I will be there arguing and discussing with you or just leaving silly comments because I do enjoy just saying random gibberish back to a comment that I don't understand. So you'll under, you'll know how much I understand your comment by the depth of detail that I give it in my reply. But I will be there, I'm always there. That's what I enjoy doing. I'll see you again in the next video next week. Until then, stay happy, stay coding.